All right, I, I haven't got time to mark this motherfucker. Here we go again. We can't hear anybody. Nobody can talk to anybody. You guessed it, Pressure Points, with your two favorite hosts, I'm D, and this is Apple Dumpling Gang AJ. We're coming at you with Season 5, Episode 42, Himmler and Schizo Carl. It's a classic AJ episode sharing a story about another member of Hitler's gang of bad boys. Find us on Instagram, at Points of Pressure. Let's get to it. Well, turn the fucking thing off, you dumbass. Hitler's Bad Boys sounds like a spin-off CW show. It just sounds like another episode title. It actually does. It does. We should have done that. Yeah. That's our, our year-end just... recap. I just talk about yeah. everybody who I've covered you around World War II. just catch up on all your World War II episodes. Yeah. It's just a short, like, two-sentence two sentence horror. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like eight of them. Um, so, how's your long weekend, Ben? We're in America. Um, so we get a four day weekend sometimes. Yeah, right. Uh, it was okay. It just goes by way too quickly. Yeah. Days to, are getting shorter. You get to feel yeah. and experience what it's like to not work your life away. Mm, yeah. Mm. So, uh, it was good though. Thanksgiving was was nice. Spent it with my family, and then went over to my girlfriend's family's place, and it was, it was a good day overall. Nice. How was yours? Oh, I got to stay home. Pirate? I didn't do anything. Pirate I boy got a, AJ. Yeah, I got an eye infection, so yeah. that's fun. Not pink eye. I did not get. Uh, my my father actually texted me and said, "Hey, well, if you quit wearing D like a telescope, you wouldn't keep getting these eye infections." Why not? You can see the fucking. You can see all the way yeah. through. Yeah, you can see the Milky Way so well through me. Yeah. But, yeah, it was a lot of fun. My eye's still swollen, but it's feeling a lot better. Good. Ah, oh, yeah. Good that it's still swollen. Good, yeah. Fine, yeah, exactly. And we're, uh, what's your official review? It's okay to be harsh. I know uh, we're drinking the apple cider I started like two months ago. I know you don't like apple cider, so it's okay. But if you want to give me a, a D view. I don't know. I don't really know yet. Like, right? it's, it's sweet, but. It's got kind of a bittery. Thing. Yeah, like it's it's not bad, and it's not too sweet because that's when I don't like apple stuff. Is when it's like, oh, apples, sweet fucking apples, and yeah. it's just like overly sweet. And I'm like, no, this sucks. It's on the drier side, but it's yeah. not super dry. It's, I honestly think that it's because of your secret ingredient, sugar. No, the raisins. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was like white sugar. It tastes like it tastes like a um like a oh yeah, we were talking about this, a Pinot Grigio. No, uh, no. it tastes like fuck. It's like a sparkling white apple wine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh like Arbor Mist. There we go. Like a good Arbor Mist. With less fructose corn syrup. Arbor Mist is pretty damn sweet. Yeah, I just mean like But yeah, I, I see what you're like saying. Like a good Arbor Mist. Like if Arbor Mist wasn't made out of Kool Aid and <laughs> Kool Aid yeah. grain alcohol, yeah, and club soda, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it carbonated well. Like, yeah, learned a little bit about what to do and what not to do. Not bad by any means. Yeah, not not too shabby. If it were more, because for me it tastes more wine than apple. Um. If it were more apple than wine, I think I wouldn't like it so much. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll take that as a W. Yeah. No, it's something really Something that you can yeah. drink. Perfect. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's enough of that. It is <laughs> good. Um, all right. I guess we'll talk we're about the show. We're back. tired. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Let me look. I think we have two more episodes this season. I don't know. I feel like. Oh, yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. I think we have. Two more, um, 44. That sounds right, because we got 22 episodes per thing. Yeah, I think we got two more episodes here, two more episodes for yes. the year on Patreon. Yeah, and then we'll be back, I think, January 9th. Let's see, we got, what the fuck? 
We got the official pressure yeah, points was, calendar out. It's a desk it was calendar. Today was the first of December, and I was like, "Wait a fucking minute." Okay, so this will be Monday the twenty eighth. We'll go until the twelfth, and we're doing that because we fucked up the uh, days at the start. Yes. Yeah. So we'll go until the twelfth, and then we will be back on the ninth or the sixteenth. I'm not positive. One of those two, I'll count it out later at some point. Until we'll have a better announcement for you uh, next week. Yeah. As to when we'll be back for season six. Shit. Damn. God damn. Season five, our first year-long fucking season. No, second year-long season. Yep. That's right. It was, it, it was a good one. I got to say, the longer this goes, we are the opposite of a fine wine. The fresher we are, the oh, better. I was like the worst. <laughs> I was like, uh, uh, I, I think yeah. we've had some of the best some, episodes so far this some season. Some fucking good ones. All right, so I guess I should talk about Carl Maria Villegut, as I assume it's pronounced. Kurt Vonnegut's ugly brother. Close. Uh, so he was born December... 1866. Uh, okay, so I should probably preface this. I don't know what episode I'm talking about, <laughs> but I recently, not recently, I kind of, I've spoken about Eric von Janison, which was Hitler's psychic, that, that mm. episode. This is kind of in that vein of, these are the secondary characters, these are the extras okay. in the movie that is World War II. These are the people underneath that influence a said, lot of shit, but they don't, you know, you don't read a book about this guy. Did you say Hitler's psychic? Yeah, Like yeah. Uh, Hitler's magic man, those ones? Yeah, Hitler's magic man. That was the guy, uh, Eric Janssen. Those were like episode 18 or something in season something. four. Yeah, we did them like a year ago. Yeah, a so. A year ago. It, Check I, them out. I Hitler's, love that. Hitler's magic man part one and two. Was it a two-parter? Yeah, it was just, Holy shit, I, I think it was about just that. after I got my wisdom teeth out. It was, yeah. Yeah. Sleepy D episodes. Yeah, it was <laughs> just after I got them out because uh, the next one, or like two after that, I had a fucking awful sinus infection. I was like, I yeah, can't record. <laughs> I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I love the concept. Well, I don't, I don't love it. I find it very interesting that there are all these people that you're not going to see. You know, you didn't see them in the newspapers. You didn't see them in books at the time. You can maybe come across one or two books or have them mentioned mm -hmm. in a couple of books. But there's not a biography about this guy, yeah. as far as I can tell, like in English. Yeah, right. I, I love those characters that are they're here. They definitely influenced a major world historical event, but their names are kind of... Moot. Gone, yeah. because somebody they, else either took <laughs> took credit for it yeah. or just said, yes, let's do or, that, and it was attributed to or that. Or they got out just in time before or they got out just in time. went to shit. Yeah, exactly. Well, I guess it was all shit, but before everyone started getting caught. Before the Nuremberg trials. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So those characters I find very interesting. So 1866, this dude is born. It's the 10th of December. Probably cold as shit. I don't know. Mm. Uh, in Austria, well, oh yeah, what it's would become be, Austria? It's gonna, be it's gonna be cold as hell. They're not south of the equator, so no. <laughs> so he he was born and baptized as a Roman Catholic in Vienna. Had a pretty uneventful life, you know. Basically, lower, lower middle class, upper lower class, kind of in that range where they were poor but not starving. Yeah, which is always a good place to be. And <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> that's where I'm at always. Yeah. Uh, at the age of 14, he joins a cadetenschut, cadetenschul, cadet school. which is cadet school, a military school. Nice, because it was probably cheaper than to keep feeding him at home. Oh, fuck yeah. So you know he's in there for a couple years. 17 years old, he gets conscripted to the infantry. Uh, the infantry regiment of Milan the First, King of Serbia. Okay. So he's he's in the military. He became a private four days after he was conscripted, 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 and eleven days after his birthday, so mm. December twenty first, eighteen eighty three. Okay. 
And he starts doing the military thing because you, you own a farm or your family has a skilled trade or you join the military. You Those a, are your options. You own a farm, a shop, or you're in the fucking military. Yeah. So he did military. In 1888, he was promoted to lieutenant. So he was kind of rising through the ranks. He was a real go-getter. I guess I I just watched uh, All is Quiet on the Western Front. And this is well before that. But yeah. that's just what I'm thinking. Those vibes. Yeah. <laughs> Good movie. Nice little pre, pre-World War II. They, they do a really good job. I think we've talked about it on here before. I think we but have. If you get a I chance to watch it, watch it. It's impressive. It's really good. So in 1889, he joins the. I have to have spelled that wrong. The Schlarafia. Schlarafia. Which was a quasi. Schlarafia. The Schlarafia, yeah. It was a quasi Masonic secret society knockoff. Okay. Of the Masons. So Fancy. He starts going in there. They delve more into the occult than the Masons, because the Masons are largely... I mean, they say you just have to believe in a god. Mm. <clears throat> like a basically Christian or Catholic god. You believe in but, a god and be able to hold on to secrets. That's yeah. That's it. And have, have power in your position at work to promote other people based on their membership yeah. of that group. <laughs> god damn it. It's not a cult. It's not. It's just a way for people to raise themselves up uh, <laughs> through insider trading. But yeah, he, he joins this secret society. They focus a bit more on the occult side of things. And he that's basically what he does. He's in the military. He's in the secret society until about 1903 when I pick up on him again. He leaves this group in 1909, though, oh. with uh, the rank of knight and chancellor. So he, he's pretty high up when he when he dips. Is there a reason that he left? I couldn't find any. I, I Actually, I know why he left. I couldn't find it officially, but he left because he felt he was more right than they were, if that makes sense. If it doesn't, oh, okay. it'll it'll make sense later. It's kind of like the type of person that he is. Yeah. 1903 hits, and he starts publishing books. He publishes one on poetry under a pseudonym, and then he just starts publishing shit on the occult. Like, all sorts of books. Oh, okay. Ghosts, ancient civilizations, astronomy. He's a like... fucking expert, okay? Yeah. Yeah, he is. He was in there, what, or 1889 to 1909? That's a 30-year career in a secret society. <laughs> he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> uh, he then started to publish books where he claimed that he was the the heir to a long line of ancient kings and scholars. Oh, no. Oh, no. uh, the heir to ancient information from a Germanic religion called Urmanism. Uh oh. And homeboy's starting to slip. He, yeah, no, sounds no. like sounds like the perfect time for Hitler to come into his life. Yeah, right. <clears throat> but he, yeah, a couple couple claims from this book where he said that his line was prehistoric. So his, oh. yeah. Unlike everybody else's family <laughs> line, who definitely isn't prehistoric. <laughs> Mine started 20 years ago. Yeah, I spawned same. out of the woods. Yeah, my great-great-grandfather was actually a mouse. So, <laughs> crazy. <here we> are. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Right? He's very... What I picked up from him was he was so pompous. He was no. an arrogant asshole. Yeah. A Nazi, a pompous Nazi, never. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't a Nazi. This is 1903. He's well on his way to becoming one. Just wait. <laughs> he claimed to have the power, I call it the Assassin's Creed power, but it's the power to recall genetic memories. <laughs> his, his power was that he was missing a ring finger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody around him gets killed off at a young age so yeah. that he could be set up as the hero. And he's always got this camera hovering over his shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> right shoulder. It's a tiny drone. Assassin's Creed syndrome. And he, yeah, he thought, well, he claimed to have the power to have a complete recall of all of his genetic memories into prehistory. Wow. So he could just be like, where, uh, my, my great grandpappy, uh, yeah, 1704, he was here, uh, <laughs> What a fucking fake ass. Uh, doing these rituals. I, li I like giving him a southern accent. but I feel like if you have a photographic memory, you're either 
a complete fucking phony or you're just wildly successful because you utilized it to study and you were like, oh, I don't have to fucking study. I can take pictures with my brains and my notes or whatever. I don't know how this shit works, but I just feel like you're either full of shit or you're really successful and you were probably smart to begin with. Well, like I had a great grandfather who owned a butcher shop. I wish I had the genetic memory to, to butcher an animal from start to finish. Because I just feel like that's a good skill to have. Like so many different animals, too. Yeah. Deer, cow, babies, rabbit, human. Yeah, toddlers. Shit like that. Yeah, exactly. Get the, the, the Albert Fishest of cuts. Nice little Ed Gein <clears throat> chair. Yeah. A nipple belt. That's what I'm always going for. He claimed that he was... Also in contact, well, he was and he also claimed he was. So, two different things. Claimed he was contact with other occultists, other secret societies and occultist groups. Okay. Which he was in contact with some. He also had some followers from his books. But he was also claiming that he was, like, you know, yeah. contacting dead Buddha or whatever. Jesus you know, like crazy Christ, shit. Yeah. He also claimed that the Bible was originally written... In a Germanic language. Mm. Mm-hmm. God and damn. that Christ, originally spelled K R I S T, was, was the German. OG God. He was Germanic and he was appropriated by all Christians to become Christ, C H R I S T, Middle Eastern white dude with Where, blonde hair. What time, What year is this that he's coming out about German national, basically German Christian nationalism? 1903? Jesus, man, was before his time. Fuck. Actually, researching him, this shit started in the 1890s and oh, yeah. earlier. Jesus. Like, he, he's in contact with a group that I'll talk about later. I don't remember what they're called. Where it's literally just pushing forth the idea that the Germanic people are, like, are superior. Like, the entire point of this secret society was... <laughs> Everybody should pull together their money oh, to buy no. as many newspapers as we can and start pushing this. God. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where this all all this shit started. Like, But it goes back. It goes back. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, there's a... To get slightly sidetracked, there is a lot in current, like, not just conspiracy theory communities, but, like, Communities of people who are like, yeah, UFOs are real, you know, we have all this evidence. Like, paranormal researchers, there are so many of them who take so much at face value. Like, oh, Jesus. a lot of the books about, like, Hitler and the occult and stuff like this have, their their claims are a stretch, and they have almost no evidence to support it. Like, yes, Hitler and many high-ranking members of the SS had an interest in the occult. But it, the way it's portrayed, been portrayed since the 60s, is way blown out of yeah. proportion. And so many people are like, like this Ermanism. It, there was also one, one like, proto-Germanic blurring of Christian and pagan beliefs called mm -hmm. Wotanism. Okay. That I do talk about here in a couple of minutes. And Eros er Eriosophy is one. And it, it's basically all these, like self-prescribed philosophical thinkers in the 1880s, 90s, and early 1900s coming together and saying, oh, yeah, I'm super racist, my and my race is better, <laughs> and that makes me a philosophical thinker. Oh, God. So, uh, yeah, there was this huge, like, <laughs> there was this huge resurgence, God. I guess, of, like, German romantic, the German romantic period, and, like, this philosophical thought and this, you know, reemergence of what we would call like paranormal thought. I'm a philosophical narcissist. Oh my and god! This is why my people are better than all of history. That's, I kept. Oh my god! There were so many people this dude spoke to, and so many groups this guy communicated oh, I'm with sure. and influenced that were just that. They were like, mm -hmm. "We're a secret society, and we all use pseudonyms so we don't get caught." <laughs> But what we are on God's plan, and this is God's mission for us, Jesus. to prove that the Germanic people are better. What the fuck? And it got worse with the rise of the Nazis because Hitler was really good at surrounding himself with yes men, 
And Himmler was really good at sur- surrounding himself with yes men. Yeah. So, like, the entire... This started off as an episode on the Ananarbi. The Ananarbi. Ananarbi. Which was the the SS, like, religious... Airbnb company. Yeah. No, uh, like, religious and historical research. Their entire goal was, like, scholarly prove that ancient Aryans oh, were, I see. you know, created all the technology that we have. Like, they, they, that's where yeah. all of that comes from. And the a lot we of the scholars were like, oh, we had to, like, yes, I agree with this theory that has no basis and nobody else in the world believes it, but I believe in it because if I don't, I will get murdered by the SS. I see. Or I want to get a promotion. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, it, it's a whole mess. Like, the, the whole occultism mixed with Nazism is blown out of proportion but it was there like it was present like we can't ignore it but there are also a lot of shit that like current conspiracy theorists I hate just saying conspiracy theorists like new age paranormal kind of people who are like into this shit like people will claim the Vril Society had a huge role like the secret society had a big role a lot of high ranking SS members were part of it and that they were researching alternative forms of energy. There is no yeah, evidence. Actual evidence. There is not even a piece of paper that says Vril Society on it anywhere on this planet <laughs> from this era. Like it is completely made it's up. It's just taking a stretch to link it to something that Yeah. Or like the Tuhuli did. Society is one I would love to talk about because they were very interesting. Mm-hmm when you get past their blatant racism of Aryans are the best, their their whole idea was if they could unlock their superpowers, they could fly, turn invisible, teleport, <laughs> like, <laughs> not die. Like, that whole thing. Like, they were completely ridiculous. And they claimed at the time that Hitler and Himmler and all these high-ranking people were uh, members of the Tuhuli Society. Uh, Hitler had nothing to do with them. Wasn't interested in them at all. anyway. But Himmler spoke at one of their meetings once, but wasn't an official member. Like I see. there was a there's yeah. a lot of people also at the time just throwing names around. So that'll put this in a little bit more perspective. This is all before that shit, but there was so much just Yeah, I'm a philosophist, but I'm racist, so therefore I'm right. Like yeah. if you if you're on Reddit and I am very smart, yeah. That subreddit, it's that feeling oh, God. that egotistical my, i have a high yeah. iq uh i know i know i know everything the meaning of a few big words and, and I i'm can, gonna use them in and every i'm good at public sentence. speaking so no speak. they're not good at public no speaking, i'm just saying like these, they some of these do guys, public yeah. speak yeah like they're not afraid to speak in front of a crowd yeah because they're a fucking egotistical narcissist exactly like egotistical narcissist meets the criteria of so many people in the rise of nazism mm-hmm. So like many the, people in power. Yeah, still. Yeah. Like, this guy even at, at one point uh, had a pretty good relationship with this guy. I forgot his name, but he helped push in Austria the rise of national fascism. Okay. He is basically the figurehead of the rise of fascism in Austria, which led to the German-Austrian, like, merging, Anschluss. Anschl- okay. And he actually didn't want that. He was he was like, yeah, fascism. Yeah, nationalism. But I don't want to merge with another country. Like, let's do it with just yeah. stay here. And okay. then the Germans were like, and no. the, the Germans and a lot of the Austrians were like, uh, no, nah, we'll just merge. Yeah. And he fled the country. He ended up huh. working with the French resistance. Jesus. But like, this guy influenced a lot of people. He... <laughs> He believed that Germanic history reached all the way to 228,000 B.C., where at the time there were uh, three suns, giants roamed the lands, and there were also dwarves (laughs) and mystical creatures. Yeah, dope. Hell yeah. My favorite part of history. Yeah, when it was cool. When the ring was finally taken to Mordor. Yeah, no, just before. (laughs) Yeah, just before. After it became the age of man, it was boring. (laughs) Speaking of war, he stated that a long period of war just ended. Okay. When, you know, things were great. Things were fantastic. Doesn't talk shit for the next 200,000 years when in 12,500 BC, Christ was revealed. He revealed himself to the planet 
as, you know, the true god. But those damn Wotanites, the followers of Wotanism, (laughs) which was another, you know, pseudo-religious, half-pagan, half-Christian, like, Nordic-based religion that Mm. was never actually practiced by anybody. And they, they were like, hmm... We don't believe him, even though he's literally a god who's revealed himself. And they formed a schism and led to wars and stuff. And in 1200 BC, uh, skips a lot around a lot in this timeline. Sure seems like it. The Wotanites, the Wotanists, destroyed the Erminic religious centers. And it was a bad time. And we had a hundred years of darkness. And then they rebuilt, uh, I think they rebuilt the center of religion, of their religion, the Erminic religion, allegedly, yeah. in Lithuania. Okay. Somewhere. Yeah, so that that's what he believed. He also started, you know, as time went on, he started pushing more and more that the, the Wotanists are an allegory for Jewish people. Wow, who would have thought? <laughs> who would have thought, yeah. right? Because the Wotanists are who became the Christians and defiled their Christ to Jesus Christ. Okay. Because Jesus was a Jew. Yeah. Yeah, you see, you see, like, yeah. it's so easy on paper to oh make these God. huge stretches. And pe- people believe this guy. Of course. Of because course they did. Oh, my God. And he was involved in a lot of shit, like, you know, a lot of, like, paranormal type stuff it was popular Mm. in the time period and he was just kind of a name he was just kind of a guy who was there who you could go and talk to and he would have an answer for everything of course yeah because he knew it because he was making it up i mean he He knew it all knew it all a walking encyclopedia he starts pushing that the erminists that are still practicing to this day are still being persecuted by the Wotanists, who are now the Jews, the Catholics, and I have no idea what this word is. What? Uh... Okay, I'm going to turn this around. <laughs> Fuck, if you can't read your own handwriting, <laughs> I'm not. It looks like what? Wuz does. Yeah, it does look like wuss does. I don't know what that word is. The the Jews and the Catholics and another group. Pretty mm-hmm. much everybody else. The Mormons, I don't fucking yeah. I don't know. The, I, the Mormons yeah. were against the the true Erminists who are still practicing to this day. Which let me like let me remind you, nobody is practicing this religion. This is fake. He made this up. Entirely. But he's pushing it as a persecution thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Persecution fetish 101. That's Hot. exactly what he's doing. He's making himself, despite being well-off and in the majority, he's framing himself <laughs> as persecuted in the minority okay. because he's an erminist and it's a secret thing. Of course. So dumb. 1906, this dude gets married somehow. To who? <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. Oh, damn. Yeah. Malween Lures von Truenringen of Bozen. Did you say Madween? Malween. Malween. It sounds like the name of somebody that would marry a fucking nutcase. Yeah. They had two daughters. One of the daughters was a twin with a son, and he had died at birth, which Carl was pissed at. Mm-hmm. He took it out on his wife a lot that... That kid died because he wanted an heir to continue oh, the line. Of course, yeah. And not a lot is said at this time, like, until later about his marriage, about his family life. Basically, this dude was just, he had a good paying job. He was very social. He was going out and about. He would go to gatherings, secret society partings. He would be asked to speak at these secret society things, which... Again, at this time period, these secret societies were not really that secret. Like it was popular. Yeah, it was a yeah. it was a big popular thing. Secret was just a fun word they used. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I, like yeah, you could you could go to a secret society meeting and see people that you know or and talk to people, but it was secret because oh, what do they do behind yeah. closed doors? Okay, there were only a couple like what 
I would actually consider a real secret society. And one of them is one of the worst ones that I've come across. <laughs> Luckily, it had, just like every secret society, has basically no traction. Yeah, no, it's all based on bullshit it's a history. Secret. Huh. Yeah, weird. <laughs> it's a secret that means they can't really yeah. do anything because <laughs> yeah, right. it'll spoil the secret. Like, I love the, the conspiracies on, like, secret underground societies. They're oh. all so stupid. Because they're so fucking yeah. stupid. But, yeah. It's just like, it's somebody that can't understand that putting literally two and two together makes four. And they're like, but no, this would actually make five because of the secret. <laughs> like, yeah. No, come it's, on, it's man. like the, well, what's that one? It's modern. It's still ongoing. The Bilderbergs? Bilderbergers? I don't know. What... It's basically a bunch of, everyone who's rich, they do meetings every once in a while mm-hmm. where you just get a bunch of rich people in one area. One time they went to like the Redwoods and people are like oh my god they're part of the illuminati they're controlling i mean there's a good chance they are controlling the government because yeah. you know how lobbying much, how much money they have yeah, yeah like but it's not like because of the secret society yeah yeah it's yeah it's <laughs> like, because because of the money that they're putting into lobbying for what would benefit them like yeah. it's not that it's, hard it's to not see. A, a concerted effort yeah. through the secret society and people are like, oh, they sacrifice babies and all this shit. Oh my and this God. was all pre-QAnon, they work with which Jay-Z. QAnon is just making it so much worse. They work with Jay-Z, who's in the Illuminati. Get the fuck out Get of here. Get the fuck Come out on. of here. The Illuminist party died off like a year after it was formed. The New World Order is a oh, rap group from dude. the fucking 80s, okay? Sorry. Yeah, exactly. I hate dude, to break it to you. New World Order, that's all those that conspiracy is. theories so are stupid. the best. Because, like, oh, there, there are some... We're getting real sidetracked. It's okay. There's some where it's like they're going to reset the money and everybody like through the U.N. and everybody's going to have the same money. But the way they're going to do it is they're going to look at how much money you have and then how much money you have. They're just going to convert one to one to the new currency, the worldwide New World Order currency. So there's there were a bunch of people like five or ten years ago who were just buying up as much Vietnamese dong as they could because they, they have like. 10 million dollar bills and shit because yeah. the inflation is so bad uh-huh. like you can get billions of Vietnamese dong for pennies mm-hmm. and people were just doing that because yeah. they thought well I can turn this in when the new world order takes over and I'll be a multi-billionaire dude the whole belief in like new world order and Illuminati stuff for me at least the way I've always felt about it is that if you fully believe in that it's because you don't understand and you can't and you refuse to learn how government process how different government processes work in different countries if you look at the new world order and you say wow that's real it's because you don't want to take the time out of your day to learn how like british parliament does things well it's less that or and how more bureaucracy yeah, in like the different governments any, like any holy different shit. country can run their own shit their own way, but in your little dumb, like, dog brain, you're like, no, there's just one big thing running everything. And yeah. it's like, mm, fuck if off. If there was a concerted like, effort to fucking dumb? microchip everybody with the COVID vaccine, yeah. they would have gone door to door and not made it, like... They would have made it... They would have so made that, it, more like, legally mandatory rather than yeah. mandatory based on your, where you work. And it also wouldn't have been, like... They wouldn't have had supply shortages. They also wouldn't have made it... Like, yeah, we can sit here and say it was mandatory, but the amount of people that didn't fucking get it doesn't it was, it mean that it was mandatory. But not on a legal level. Yeah, on exactly. On a job level. Yeah. Like, it's if like, you work If it were people, further like, than that, if it were more than just, like, job mandatory... Then there's every some fucking effort. person would have the vaccine whether they wanted it or not. Yeah, and and any asshole and with an like, AR-15 who thinks they can take down the government uh, would be dead or in jail right now. Or I they mean, would have just gotten the I shot. Mean, is this really a problem? Uh, no, not at all. But yeah, it's just I love I feel it. Like I love it's, it. It's just such an easy, easy excuse to not learn about another country. Yeah. That's all it is to me. And it, it helps me feel like, okay, things are going to be okay. With things how they are in the, in this, in the world, things are going to be okay. Because they were going through this same shit with people whistling, you know, whistle-dogging, whatever that term is. Whistle-blowing? Whistle, not really. 
you know, like uh, virtue signaling and oh. conspiracy-ing and spouting off all this bullshit. Uh, people were doing it in 1906, and the and we're here now, and that's fair. Yeah, it's gonna be okay. Yeah. Do you? Will I be able to punch a Nazi in the face by the time I die? I fucking hope so. <laughs> it's on his bucket list. It that's is fair. <clears throat> okay. So. Okay. So he he gets married. He has two kids. Struggles to get a son, and World War One breaks out. Okay. And you know he's already a soldier. Yeah. And he 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 uh, serves on the southern and the eastern front. He becomes Oof. a colonel, and he's on the front line for like two years. Yeah. He eventually gets retired from the front, and he puts he gets put in charge of a convalescence camp. Okay. So people who are recovering, and it's a slow recovery, oh, that okay. kind of thing. So infections, yeah. diseases, amputations, tr- you know, going fucking completely insane because you're in World War One on the yeah, front line. Seriously. You know, they they gave him basically. Okay, you're a colonel. Go somewhere else. Like you don't. Need, we'll send the freshies in. Oh, okay. You know, he served his time essentially. And from there, he that was about nineteen late nineteen seventeen. I think is when he got pushed to the camp, and he stayed there until the end of the war. And he ends up retiring from the military, completely clear and clean record. Uh, 1919, he got okay. some rewards, some medals, and shit throughout the time. But he gets out, he gets a pension, he's set. Like this is this is where yeah. you're, this is where life begins. <laughs> he rekindles his relationship with a guy named Theodore Kajetpol. It's C Z E P L. Oh, okay. This dude is in the Order of the New Templars. This Ooh. is the group. <laughs> Their flag was yellow with a swastika and some fleur de lis around it. Uh, he, they were 100% racist eugenicists. Oh, okay. Like, and they were fascist agitators. So anytime there was somebody, like a... An anti-fascist group? An a anti-fascist group, just a pro-democracy meeting. They, anything they like would that, they go, would go and, and stir up shit. Buttons. Okay, I see. The, yeah. They were the, the opposite of Nat Arno. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the complete opposite. <laughs> and he starts... He starts working with them a little bit, talking, communicating, maybe writing some books, doing some speeches, whatever. The thing with this group is that I they are much more – well, they would have been much more of an actual secret society. Nobody in the group oh, knew okay. the other person's names yeah, they, because they used fake names. Yeah. And they, they were actually trying to stay hidden, which also shows that they knew what they were doing was not necessarily the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. Or you know, persecution fetish is always this is, yeah. I mean, a in a way, it's an it's also a way to pr- fucking protect one another. As much as I hate to say it's the it smart is. way to do it during it this is time, the smart way to do it. It is like if you don't know what somebody's real fucking name is, you can't implicate them when you get caught doing something and they find out you're a part of this yeah. fucking pro fascist group. And in this, um, you know, this time period, it's post World War One. Pre World War Two, so the economy shit. Mm-hmm. The government basically looks for any scapegoat at any time, yeah. and I'm I'm even talking just local uh, local governments are like, we need to find somebody to blame mm-hmm. on the damage to our economy that the reparations from World War One and that the cost of war has done to our country. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was the smart thing to do. Even though they were all assholes, yeah. they they did end up buying a newspaper, which they would just slip in like eugenic ideas and like Aryan um, supremacy ideas and shit like that. Oh, I see. So, uh, Carl, good old Carl, he ends up publishing and blaming the loss of World War One on the persecution of the Ermis, er, uh, the uh, Erminists. Okay. So he says we lost World War One because. Here in Austria and in Germany, we have practicing Erminus, and the the Jews and the Catholics were, uh, you know, conspired against us to make us lose World War One, even Jesus. though they were the aggressors. But you know, whatever. Nineteen yeah. twenties. <clears throat> I don't have a set date for some of these. Throughout the nineteen twenties, he ended up writing thirty-eight verses of a manuscript. Okay. He ended up claiming. 
He wrote over a thousand verses. <laughs> Thirty-eight were ever found. <laughs> that's Which what I'm great. gonna. That's what I'm gonna do if uh, you ever die before me. The podcast will stop, and I'll be like, "Yeah, we did over like ten thousand episodes, nine million episodes, something." Mm-hmm. And people are like, well, there are only just over 100 out there. Oh, we just have a lot. It's just I don't know where they are now. Like, yeah. I, re- I released them. I, I just don't know what happened to them. They're, they're the missing tapes. The, the they're, Catholic they're Romans. missing episodes, you the, know. The Westboro Baptist <laughs> Church is coming after me. So uh, donate to my GoFundMe. I wrote an entire book series. Each book was like 600 pages long. Maybe only the prologue was found, but let me tell you. There's there's a whole six series yeah, book out that's there. exactly it's it. It's like, get the fuck out of here, dude. Seriously. So he claims that he memorized these 1,000 verses, 38 verses, from his father, which I don't know why he would have to memorize them and his father would have to teach them to him. If yeah. he had perfect genetic recall, yeah. he could just remember that. <laughs> And he should be able to remember all 1,000 at that point. Yeah, And this this may sound extremely familiar to you, but these were all written in his own runic alphabet hmm, of his design. Okay. Doesn't that sound really familiar to yeah. like a religion that's on the cusp of being considered yeah. major? It's like, a, it's like a more recent religion. This is kind of a trend. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. Apparently, if you write he was, shit... He that was is... taking notes from fucking Palmyra, oh, yeah. New York. Yeah. It turns out if you just write it in your own self-made language, you could put out 38 verses in like a week. Yeah. And nobody can fact check you because it's in your own language, bro. Yeah, if you sit with your head in a hat and just yeah. spouting bullshit to a friend that can write. You're set. You guys can write a fucking novel. Yeah, and then have to alter that novel when someone steals the first half and you can't remember what you put in. But yeah, I, I, I came across that and I'm like, that is so insane that how much people have been duped by other people just making shit up. Huh. It's it's fantastic. And there's a medical diagnosis related to it that I'll talk about at some point. Okay. But basically those verses delved into nor- numerology, which numerology did play a pretty big role on the occult factors of Nazis and shit like that. They they uh you know had good luck numbers and numbers that would repeat and shit like that. Um, they, it also published a, an alternative view of history in which the center of the, u- not the universe, the galaxy that we're in, because remember we had three suns at one point? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now well, the center of the galaxy the fucking fairies used to dwarves. be really close to Earth. We used to be the center of the galaxy. Yeah. Wow, that sounds familiar. We used to be better than we were. Let's wow. go back to that. Uh. Based on nothing. And then the new suns. Well, the new sun fought the old suns, and now they changed the center of the galaxy, and now we're like third planet or whatever. Yeah, we got the middle sun planet. Yeah. Or the middle sun. Hey, that's me. <laughs> the oh, middle sun. it's you. <laughs> but, yeah, it was a, it was a rambling shit stack. Just completely of incoherent. Just, yeah, giants and dwarves and fairies and unicorns and... The sons are fighting each other. Okay. Never really says that. So it sounded like a, a 2022 Kanye interview. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, my God. You have no idea God. how close oh all of this God, shit is. Oh, God, I'm sure. I am shocked and not shocked. At how similar. At how similar. The, like, I, I just love this this story with this guy because it's putting us in a mind of probably an insane person, mm-hmm. but it's also putting us in close to the people he spoke to impressionable people yeah. gullible people people who were using the secret societies to get political or financial power and it's getting us in the like yeah it sounds like a crazy person spouting off to nobody yeah. people were believing people him. Are buying he was doing yeah. speeches and some of the people who were buying this shit are higher up than you think like this episode i haven't mentioned should any have been names called yet but 19 uh early 1900s alex jones <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's okay. very close. You get the persecution fetish, you get the alternative view of history, you get the I'm a minority even though you're the majority and yeah. you're being persecuted even though you're persecuting other people. Yeah, exactly they're all, that. They're all out to get me because I'm exposing this, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's exactly it. So 1924 turns out, and 
turns out his family has been destitute this entire time. Like, he's not making any money. His retirement <laughs> is shit. Like, this is post World War yeah. World War One. They don't have a lot of money to give to their vets. Yeah. Like, goddamn. Uh, he basically hasn't had a job. His books aren't really doing that well. <laughs> like, these are not New York Times bestsellers. Yeah. Uh, he's been threatening to kill his wife and beat his, and he's been beating his kids. And he's had a lot of very eccentric behaviors and he has a lot of ideas of like grandiose projects, like these huge projects. And his, <laughs> it's basically his wife comes up to him and says, Hey, honey, I, you didn't have any, you didn't go to work for the last week. Can you help me with like the laundry or you want to make dinner tonight? Do you want to go find something like, Maybe just go to town and just go shoot a fucking go find rabbit. A, yeah, you know, go find something. Go shoot a rabbit. Go get a job in a shop. Go clean something and yeah. come bring home dinner. And she's like, "Bitch, I am descended from a line of king scholars God. from prehistory." Jesus like Christ. he's that kind of guy. Yeah. And his wife, God bless her, she had the heart <laughs> that. He was arrested at a cafe with his friends. They were probably talking about how white people are awesome. Mm -hmm. Because his wife went to the police and pushed him into a mental institute. Oh, shit. They arrested him and, in, and like, incarcerated him in a mental institution. He was found to be legally incompetent Jesus. by the local court. And he was diagnosed with schizophrenia and megalomania, which is now, today, it's narcissistic personality disorder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no shit. He yeah, was, who would have thought? I diagnosed out, that before we even got further yeah, into this episode. Turns out those genetic memories are just the voices from inside of his yeah, head because he has Jesus. schizophrenia in the early 1900s. What a time to have schizophrenia, though. God damn, dude. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. So he's incarcerated mm -hmm. for years, for, do I have to do math, three years Jesus. in a mental institution. Not long enough. No, not at all. Damn, dude. His own wife, huh? Sold him out to the feds. And I'm shocked they actually did it. Yeah, really. Based on not. the word of just his wife. Yeah. But they did. And he he gets out in 1927. And there's, there's not a lot of information. He ended up abandoning, abandoning his family in 1932. Who would have thought? Yeah, completely ditched him. And he moved to Munich. He saw the writing on the wall, I'm sure. Oh, definitely. And he moved to Munich. He started to <clears throat> communicate with his fans, with the other secret societies, with some occult groups, with the Order of the New Templars. Mm -hmm. And he starts maybe writing a couple of books. They're more like manuscripts. Yeah. Like, he's not an English major. No, no. He's born no, in the 1880s in, yeah. in rural Austria. <laughs> the fact that he can read is because of the military. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> they needed him to read to know what way to point the gun. <laughs> <clears throat> and 1933 hits. 1933, big year for the Nazis. And he's actually at a, at a conference. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the conference was about. It was a conference. And he is introduced to Heinrich Himmler himself, you know, head of the SS, guy who formed the SS, yeah. BFFs with Hitler. He's introduced to him, and Himmler's like, I like this guy. I oh like his God. thoughts. I like where his head's at. I like how he says that I'm better Jesus. than everybody else. <laughs> and he it joins the SS under a pseudonym, which was very similar to his name, but <clears throat> it was Karl Maria and, like, Weisshofer. <laughs> and he I mean the dude the dude is not going to get rid of his his regular name. No. Like Carl Maria? Come it's on. it's not going to happen when you're a fucking narcissist. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. That's yeah. 100%. I'm sure he says, "No, no, no. You can call me yeah. Carl." Just uh, just stick to Carl. I'm a crazy person and I also refuse to not use my real name. So Carl Maria uh, Vasser. <laughs> yeah, somebody walked by with a vase and a saucer. They go, Vasser? And he goes, yeah, Vos yes, Vasser. Yes, Vasser. That's me. <laughs> Throw a T in there. <laughs> so he joins the SS because he's offered a job to be the head of the Department of Pre- and Early History in the SS Race and Settlement main office. Oh, God. 
Yeah. Because he bumped elbows with Himmler at a conference. Yeah. Like, at a work thing. <laughs> because they had basically identical views on... Yeah. On Turns out a, a paranoid schizophrenic with narcissism <laughs> has the same views as Heinrich Himmler. No shit. <laughs> Who would have thought? Wait. The, I could have switched those two around. It would have been the exact same. <laughs> Jesus. But, like, the fact that he just immediately gets a, the job at the head of the department of pre and early history. He has no schooling in anthropology, archaeology, history, anything like that. Mm-hmm. But because he's claiming all these things, they're like, oh, well, yeah, let's see. No, because, we won't look into it. We'll take his word for yeah, it. It was a big part that at the time the the SS was trying to create a new religion for the Germans. Mm-hmm. Because a big group of them were Christian or Christian adjacent, or Catholic. They wanted to blend kind of Christianity with paganism, and they saw Ermanism and were like, okay. Wow. That's exactly what we were looking for. <laughs> this this bullshit. And yeah. the, the best thing is that it came, <laughs> it came with the history. It came with the baggage of a already practicing religion because he had a history, a historic timeline. Jesus. So he did half their work for them. <laughs> yeah, for real. Good lord. Oh, it was it was so good. And in 1934, he officially ripped off the Elder Futhark rune uh, language. It's a kind of northern Scandinavian um, <laughs> no. set of runes. Yeah, Elder Futhark. Hmm? And I have a book of them right here. I'm he, not a neo-Nazi. <laughs> he ripped them off. Wow, no way. Yeah, he added like no three way. new Someone ones. Someone like this could rip off And a new said that this was his it. ancient uh, alphabet. He, yeah, he added three new ones, uh, which Jesus. happened to be very close to Nazi, popular Nazi symbols at the time. God damn. And he claimed that this alphabet of runes, he learned it from his grandpappy. But this was the first time he wrote them down and told anybody about them. Oh my and God. again, I don't know why he had to learn them from his grandpappy if he had genetic memory recall. But... I don't know why we didn't just call this episode World War II Joseph Smith. Right? God <laughs> it is damn, dude. insane that Fucking like, there has to be... Our brains have to be biological computers with algorithms in them because (laughs) narcissists have the same fucking algorithm running. They do the Uh, same shit over and over and over again, and it works. Fucking pre-technology age. They're all the same fucking thing. It's it's completely insane. So, you know, he starts doing his work. He's, within the same year, promoted to head of archives and becomes lieutenant brigadier. In the SS. That's in November, uh, 1934. 1935, okay. in the spring, he's transferred to Berlin to be put on Himmler's personal staff. <laughs> and he's prom- promoted to Brigade... I can't. Brigade, Brigade Führer. Jesus. And it, this guy is just cruising he his is way like, up. Himmler, second in command yeah. of... All of the Nazis, yeah. head of the SS, you know, probably jerk off bros with Hitler. Yeah. Like, and he met Himmler two weeks after he got out of a fucking mental institution. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And he starts working in the office of the chief adjutant of the SS, who is Carl Wolf, which, cool name. <laughs> and he starts. Way cooler than Carl Maria Voster. Like, come on, <laughs> yeah. dude. And. Some of the high-ranking SS dignitaries start to practice Ermanism. One of the high-ranking members of the SS had their child baptized in Ermanism. What the fuck? It was complete, like, he made it up. Why would they have a baptism? Why (laughs) the fuck would you believe it? (laughs) As soon as he would mention fucking dwarves and elves and like a lord of the rings history i'd be like okay i'm not gonna take like your word for the fact that this is a a history i think it's a really interesting world that you've built in your brain carl and i think that it would make a phenomenal fantasy book however i don't think that i don't think that's history buddy bring me some bones i don't think that's history. bring me some, some bones bro yeah and it's it's insane. He convinced people to start practicing his fake religion. Jesus. And it 
I don't understand. He actually went on some of the NNRB expeditions. Yeah. The the famous expedition that they did, the most famous, was an expedition to Tibet because there Hitler put forward the idea, I think it was Hitler, that the Aryans were originally they come from everywhere. Apparently they were like originally further south where they set up the Greek and Roman empires, but there's another group who thought they came from further north and then came down. It, it's a whole mess. But basically they were trying to find if the people in Tibet had Aryan like features. Okay. That have been diluted <laughs> over the years to prove that they were actually kicking China's ass a couple thousand years ago. Jesus. He was involved in one of these expeditions, but it was to the Black Forest, which is in Germany, in 1936. It was a 22-day-long expedition where they, they did find an ancient Germanic settlement, you know, like a late Middle Ages, probably, maybe early, or uh, maybe mid-Middle Ages. Yeah. Like, they had beams in their houses. Like, this was not yeah. Yeah. prehistory, but he immediately went in and was like, this is an Urmanistic complex. Oh, my God. This was actually the center of the Urmanist religion. <laughs> and the tour guide's like, no. It and, was burned down by the Wotanists. And he speaking over yeah. him. Oh, God. And he, he ends up connecting all of these, like, middle-aged <laughs> Germanic tribal settlements that some of which were documented by the Romans. Like. Yeah. It was, And he starts saying, oh, this is this complex with the Urmanists. This is this one, and they're connected, and they make a land grid. Uh, yeah, and they, they basically took them at face value because everybody in the NNRB and in this kind of wing of the SS were yes-men. They were like, well, in that, and this is all... perpetuating the belief that we want that Aryans are better. They're all so religious nationalists. That's yeah. what they are. Yeah, they, uh, they 100% just, if somebody... Like, I could, knowing this, if I went back in time, I could join this institute and get a cushy desk job just by saying, yeah, I read somewhere that there was evidence that the Aryans invented coffee Yeah. in maybe. Turkey. And they were originally in Turkey, and then they left, and then this you know, <laughs> other group took over and took credit yeah. for it. They were the Wotanists. Just like a, a slight understanding of of one historical event. And being able to bullshit your way into a promotion. That's all that this guy Dude, had to do. 100%. I don't oh, understand damn. this. He ended up having a really big influence on the SS's, like, pseudo-religious practices that they started oh, putting sure. in propaganda and started pushing out to people. Because the whole idea, the whole goal with this entire wing was that quasi Christianity mixed with pagan because they could because there were you know Germanic tribes did practice paganism mm -hmm. and there there was really a butting of heads at this time period between people who were like no we should like double down on the Germanic tribes like they were very vicious war torn like kicking ass taking names kind of people versus the idea that oh they were like the ancient advanced race above everybody who you know would find a poor group of people and give them the secret to agriculture like there there was this butting of heads of we know we should double down that we were always yeah. these war torn this is our land kind of thing to angels essentially you know mm. eventually the germanic tribes that that was the the lesser of the focus <laughs> if you couldn't tell in november 1938 Carl Wolf, you know, second in command of the SS, so kind of could be viewed as third in command of the Nazis. Mm -hmm. If you think of Himmler as definitely right hand man, manned man at this point, <clears throat> I don't know why he did this. I can't find any information as to why he did this, but for some reason, Carl Wolf went to lunch with a little known gal called Carl's wife. Carl's oh, bitch of an ex-wife. Nice. And Hell yeah. And she spilled the beans. She was like, nice. he was incarcerated. I put him in a mental institution. He beat us. He was this terrible person. And Wolf did exactly what he, you know, what you think somebody vying for more attention and more position, more rank. He goes right to Himmler. Yeah. He says, dude, 
this guy is crazy. This guy is a diagnosed schizophrenic narcissist. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> we we grabbed him out of a fucking mental institution. What's going on? Yeah, why did you let this guy... <laughs> Turns out, to get close with Himmler, you just have to say everything he wants you to say. Yeah. Like, it was really easy. So, Himmler retired him. <laughs> Very co- A few days after, he received his official letter of resignation... <laughs> which was forged, obviously, yeah. and he was just kicked out. He was kicked to the curb. They're like, go home. Yeah, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. And he wasn't even, like, at that point, technically in the SS because he joined under that pseudonym. Mm-hmm. So he didn't get any benefits of being in the SS, yeah. being in Berlin. In fact, that's even worse if you're in Berlin, dude of his age. You know, he's getting older. Yeah, he's, he's like not in the SS. He's like 70 at this point. Just yeah. over, Just over 70, 72, I think. Yeah, so he lost it all. He was rising to the top, lost it all. He basically moved city to city every year. Couldn't really get any work. He was old as shit. Like, uh, insane, obviously. Still writing, still trying to. Still, like, trying to throw his occult power around. But at this point, Hitler had done that speech where he was basically like, uh, occult is bad. So he's kind of like, Oh, fuck, that was my one thing. Yeah, Jesus. He ended up having a stroke in a refugee camp in 1943. Survived it. Moved to a a small town in Germany. Ended up dying uh, two, no, about three years later, January 3rd, 1946. He died. (laughs) And he was homeless the whole time, basically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like. Damn. He fucked ended up. Ended it with nothing. Super anticlimactic ending. But this, fantastic. Man. I love that this dude is just... Just a nut. He was a, an insane person just was able fucking... to influence so much of what is still going on today with anti-Semitism, with conspiracy theories, the occult, QAnon, everything like that. It was totally fine. It's like, he's just, just some literally insane person. Yeah. The Alex Jones of the Alex Jones. World War II. We should have we should have said that. That's eh, fine. We'll put it in the eighteen eighties Alex Jones. Yeah. <laughs> God damn. Whoa. What a fucking ride. Yeah, and it was longer than I thought it would be. So sorry about that. But hey, I mean, it worked out. We had some 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 tangents. Yeah. No sweat. You got Patreon pulled up? Oh, I think so. Uh, I'll do my little spiel for it first. So, if you guys would like an additional episode, exclusive episode per month, which uh, we'll be recording that this week, um, it won't slip on to December 1st, I promise. Um, well, you have, what, July, August, September, October, November, five additional exclusive episodes that are really fucking well done. They're good. Uh, They're full color photos. Yeah. Uh, that's the appeal. And we've also got like sloppy seconds on there. AJ has his uh, voices that he's uploaded a few months ago. Good stuff. There's a lot like some bonus shit. A lot of good stuff on Patreon. So if you uh, if you want to subscribe to us on there, we won't take offense and you'll get a nice little shout out at the end of the episodes. Yeah. Lowest one's 420, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Bruh. We're more likely to respond to your your messages on Patreon. So. Yeah. Uh, so, of course, we've got the the chair people of the board <coughs> who make all the decisions. You know, yeah. they green light all of our projects and yep. uh, show ideas and stuff like that. Uh, Mini D, Nordic Thunder, and Toddle Waddle. Thank you, so guys. Thank you, guys. So much. And then, uh, of course, we've still got uh, Abby, AJ's third nut, Haley, Thomas, Dark Runner, D's Nuts, and Lara Ravo. Thank, Thank you guys so much for keeping the lights on, letting us do this show into almost six seasons coming yeah. up soon. Yeah, six seasons. Hey. Uh, I'll have the date for you. We have two more this this season after Plus this episode. Plus the bonuses. Yeah, which we'll still do a December exclusive yeah. episode for you on Patreon. So if you like listening to us for some fucking reason... And you're going to miss us in December. Subscribe on Patreon. And as always, if you ever have any show ideas, music, movies, fucking TV shows, anything that you would like to share to us, by all means, reach out to us on Instagram at points o pressure. And we will catch you guys next Monday. <laughs>